So the fact that I'm cracking passwords that are quote unquote weak um, is not my fault. I, I don't use bad passwords. <laughs> I, like I, I use I really like good it's passwords. Not, it's not your fault that I use a bad password. Come yeah. on, it's your fault. Yeah, right? That, that's not my <laughs> fault. In the real world, people use weak passwords. That's just the name of the game. Human and nature. Yes, yeah. it's just human nature. It's too hard to type this in. It's too weird. I can't remember it. I've got too many. And these are these are legit complaints against having to use a password, which is why password managers are a godsend because they help us with that. I don't have to remember anything. It does it for me. I only need to remember one. I only need to make one good password, and that's the only one I got to remember when it comes to using something like a password manager. So this is an encouraged thing. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's good that you highlighted that because on other videos that I've created, um, the first complaint I get is people say, you're using a simple password. But, um, you know, uh, a video, let, let, let's make the video eight hours long, Daniel. Just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds fun, right? Hey, are you still in there with me? <laughs> Apparently it's still going. Thanks for hanging in there, right? No, right, exactly. Hey, you've got to do a demonstration. You just want people to see how the tool works. That's the, the purpose of what we're doing today. All right, so I'm good to go. I'm going to hit enter. And now things are starting. And you'll notice that it says, warning, detected hash type MD5 crypt, but the string is also recognized as MD crypt long. So you see, it's trying to make an educated guess. And it tells us if I want to go with MD5 crypt long, use the dash dash format equals MD5 crypt dash long option to force loading that type instead, right? So it's going to go, I'm going to default with this, but if that ain't right, why don't you go ahead and try that? So I like that about Hashcat. It kind of gives you some yeah. helps and, and, and brings you along because at the end of the day, that's what I want to do is crack the passwords on these things. And if I'm not doing it right, it's great that the tool will actually kind of feedback and say, oh, hey, have you have you thought about this option? Maybe that'll work a little better for you. So I, I like tools that do that. So we've already cracked the root password. We've cracked B, which we already knew that one, but I threw it in there because what the heck. Of course, horrible password uh, OPSEC here. Bug is, you know, obviously this is a, a purposefully, you know, thing. <laughs> We're doing a demonstration here. If you've never done real password cracking, it's a time consuming operation. It's something that's going to take you a hot minute. Well, outside of the scope of being able to do a demonstration um, in, in some sort of time constraint. Hey everyone, David Bumble back with Daniel from IT Pro TV. Once again, really want to thank them for sponsoring this video. Daniel, in this series, we're looking at some of your favorite hacking tools. Which one are we looking at today? Today, I figured, uh, you know, kind of on the heels of our Metasploit demonstration, we were left there with the last thing we looked at. And I said, oh, look at all these password hashes. We should probably break those, right? Because that's something you do as uh, someone who's into ethical hacking, penetration testing. From time to time, you're going to be confronted with a obfuscated, encrypted even password. Uh, and how do you get around that? What do you do? Well, there are some various and sundry tools for uh, breaking those things. But today I figured one of the, the oldest, one of the best tools for breaking passwords, uh, breaking hash words, passwords that have hashes <laughs> that are hashed is John the Ripper. It's been around forever. It's a tried and true tool. It's one that I just hold near and dear to my heart because, hey, I cut my teeth on it. There are other password hashing or password cracking uh, tools out there, but uh, John the Ripper just seems to be my go-to for the most part uh, because it's easy, has a couple of really cool things you can do with it, and it's, for the most part, effective, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, let's do the script kitty thing first, and yeah. then you, we can go through the documentation and you can teach us. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm looking at right here on my screen is instead of re, you know, breaking into that machine, I just SSH'd into it. We did find the username and password. SSH was available, and now I have another avenue of attack for that specific box. But I'm, I'm looking at the Etsy shadow file, which in a Unix world is, you know, it's the thing. It's, it's, it's where you keep those hashed passwords. So or I say Unix, it's Linux as well. They're not the same. They're different, I know, right? Can you, do, can you show us where that file stored? Sure, it's in Etsy slash shadow. So if you do like an LS, which lists files to Etsy, uh, slash shadow that that is the directory if i do a dash l it'll actually give me some long listing format there so it's showing me here that this is read write and read 
for read write for root and read for shadow, which is just like a service account, which can deal with this. But you'll notice that, that that's a pretty locked down thing. If you were looking at the shadow group, you would realize that, oh, the only thing it really does is, is this right here, which is look into this. So if there are password changing uh, or manipulations that need to be done, it'll, it'll probably either use the root or the shadow group to make those manipulations. So it's in Unix and Linux, you're going to look just in Etsy and it will be called shadow, no extensions normally. Every now and then you do get to find a dot back file laying around somewhere. And that's probably a backup. If you can get your hands on that and it doesn't have uh, strong permissions on it, it, might be a good place to find some password hashes such as what we're looking at right now. But once I have access to that file, to get it out and start cracking it with John the Ripper, I just need to actually just copy the things that I want. So I don't need, you know, NTP, Pro FTP, all these service accounts that don't have passwords. They also don't have logins or anything of like that. So I, I'm not really worried about that. I want these passwords because you got to remember where we're at in the stage. We've already compromised the machine. So this would be in what's called post-compromise phase of my hacking methodology. Now, what can I do now that I've gained some access? One of the best things to do is to grab user accounts and try to crack their passwords because you never know what access those user accounts could give you access to. So it's something you always want to engage in. It's like usually the first thing I do once I've gained some sort of system access or ability to read the Etsy shadow file is grab the user accounts and put them in a file so that I can crack them with John the Ripper. So just for people who don't know Linux very well, did you use a command like cat or yep. how did you display that information? And you, you have been paying attention. Yes, absolutely. I use cat <laughs> to do this. So cat is a way to either put things together, concatenate is what cat stands for, or you can use it to read files. Hey, show me the um, contents of a file. The, just the word cat will do that for you. So you do cat, then the file name, bam, you're good to go. So it's just spitting this out here on the screen for me. So all I'm gonna do is just highlight what I want. So I've got a block of users right here. We've got another one right here, which is B. Uh, we probably have a root account as well, and you can see it has a password as well. So we'll, we'll grab all this stuff. I'm just gonna highlight, copy that. And what I'll do is I'll open another one of these things right here, and we'll just uh, do a little bit of that, get into where we're at, hacking. And then I'm just gonna open up a um, a, a, an editor, which is, I'll just use nano. And we'll call this, this was the B box. So we'll call this B dot hashes, or, you know, what? we'll call it shadow. It's a little more descriptive dot hashes. So it kind of gives you an idea of what's the contents of this file. It's a little more descriptive. I like that. I'll make this box a little bigger. They give you such, I got to change the preferences on this thing. <laughs> Grab that corner. There we go. All right. Now we can see things. All right. And just right click, paste that in there. There is some like official way to do this where you, you, you actually use cat or I think John the Ripper has some functionality where you take the, the password file and the shadow file and it combines them into one. But I, I've never had to do that, honestly. I've, I've always just grabbed the shadow file and crack away and it, it seems to work fine for me. Uh, if, there might be a good reason to do that, but I just haven't seen it yet. All right, let's get those other two accounts. This one is B and copy that. Put that in our little file we got going on here, paste it in. And then of course, root. What is that root account? And of course, this is a this is kind of a try catch thing, you know. You're gonna try to crack passwords. I don't know what the passwords are on this other than the one that I'm used to log in with. So this will be just as much of a uh, of a fun exercise for me as it will be for you good folks out there. So I'm gonna paste that in there. So now that I have this file, it's in the correct format. John will be able to understand, oh, this is that format. It's pretty good of intuitively understanding by looking at the type of hash that, it's look, that it sees in the file of, oh, this is that type of, or this is that type of. It'll make a guess, an educated guess at what hash that is. But um, uh, sometimes it doesn't do a great job of that. And you'll have to tell it, hey, this is the format. That's the word, list formats or show formats. It's one of those two. And it'll show you all the different formats that you can, that John can crack against. So if you see like MD5 and then there's like another type of MD5, maybe that's the better one and, and you're not getting the action you're looking for with standard MD5. You got to go with something a little, a little off kilter. 
So you just have to tell it that, feed it that information. All right, now that we have this, save and exit. I can close this and um, I'll log out of the B box here and just exit. So I was just SSH'd into there. All right, now we should have a file called shadow hashes. Yay. And now we can run John the Ripper against it. And in order to do that, you just invoke John. If it's not in your system path, you're going to have to give it the full path. But for me, I got it in my system path. So I can just John shadow.hashes. Right? Now, that's a standard set of attack. It will just go with basically its defaults. And maybe I'm good with that. I think what it ends up doing is it, it runs um, um, the built-in dictionary file that it has that it comes pre-compiled for and then it'll apply some basic rules if that doesn't work and sees if it gets anything out of that other than that i would want to run my own dictionary file one of the best ones and the most widely used and for pretty good reason uh, is because how large it is is the rocku.txt file if you haven't seen that it's a great one just do a dash w uh equals and i'll kind of just break this off here and then you give it the path to your Rocky file. Mine's in user, share, word list, word lists. And it's rocky.txt. Yeah, so we'll explain all those details in a moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll go through that stuff. So it's just a, just a dictionary file with a bunch of crack passwords in it. And it's going to try to check this for it. All right, so I'm good to go. I'm going to hit enter. And now things are starting. And you'll notice that it says, warning, detected hash type MD5 crypt but the string is also recognized as mdcrypt long. So you see, it's trying to make an educated guess and it tells us if I want to go with md5 crypt long, use the dash dash format equals md5 crypt dash long option to force loading that type instead, right? So it's gonna go, I'm gonna default with this, but if that ain't right, why don't you go ahead and try that? So I like that about Hashcat. It kind of gives you some yeah. helps and, and, and brings you along because at the end of the day, that's what I want to do is crack the passwords on these things. And if I'm not doing it right, it's great that the tool will actually kind of feedback and say, oh, hey, have you, have you thought about this option? Maybe that'll work a little better for you. So I, I like tools that do that. So we've already cracked the root password. We've cracked B, which we already knew that one, but I threw it in there because what the heck. Of course, horrible password uh, opsec here. Bug is, you know, obviously this is a, a purposefully, you know, thing. <laughs> We're doing a demonstration here. If you've never done real password cracking, it's a time-consuming operation. It's something that's going to take you a hot minute. Well, outside of the scope of being able to do a demonstration um, in, in some sort of time constraint, right? Because passwords can be complex. Passwords can be difficult. Maybe the password is in your dictionary file, but you got a big dictionary file. So it just takes time to churn through those things uh, before it actually finds the passwords. When it comes to me actually working with stuff like this in the, in the real world, uh, maybe I'm doing a CTF or I'm, I'm actually just checking the OPSEC of my users if I'm inside of an environment and I say, hey, I want to check and make sure the people in my organization are using strong passwords. I'll grab the file, dump it in here and just let it churn and burn, kind of set it and forget it kind of thing and come back. So uh, if I'm using a CTF, I probably don't go too long on password cracking Maybe if I've got the time and I don't care and I just want it to go and, and see if I can get it to give me some password action. Most people that create CTFs are, are pretty smart about, for whatever reason, they just don't want you to have those passwords. I actually think that would be a good idea for people to have the information beforehand because a lot of times things don't work <laughs> correctly. You need to go in and fix it so you can actually play the game. I run into that a lot. But, hey, what are you going to do, right? I don't create. I, I could create my own, I guess, right, and say, I, I do appreciate the fact that a lot of people now are starting to put, when you get to the login screen of the, of the machine itself, it'll tell you my IP is this. You're like, oh, good. Now I don't have to wonder whether or not the virtual adapters are working <laughs> correctly, which is so frustrating. But uh, as you can see, it's working, right? It's cracked a couple of passwords. It's turned it through. We had quite a few as far as how long this will take. It just depends on whether you're using CPU versus GPU, which it can do. I'm, I'm in virtualization here, so I'm not, I'm not going after my GPU to try to make this fast. Again, uh, it's, it's a demonstration, so we're not trying to get too deep in the weeds. We want to keep you just a, hey, what does this tool do? How does it kind of work? Give me some of the options and some of the standard things it can work with, and, and you can see how that, that works itself out. 
Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's good that you highlighted that because on other videos that I've created, um, the first complaint I get is people say, you're using a simple password. But, um, you know, uh, a video, let, let, let's make the video eight hours long, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds fun, right? Hey, are you still in there with me? <laughs> Apparently it's still going. Thanks for hanging in there, right? No, right, exactly. Hey, you've got to do a demonstration. You just want people to see how the tool works. That's the, the purpose of what we're doing today. Uh, and and I, I would say they have a legitimate claim to their complaints, right? To say, yep. hey, you're using a weak password. Of course, it's going to break it. Right? And that's a funny thing. So um, I've been confronted with, with that kind of thing before as well, right? A, yep. we set the expectation that we're, we're going to we're gonna crack some passwords, whether or not they're strong. If I've created them myself, yes, I have control of that. But let's, let's talk realism here for a second. I don't know if you know this, but if you do a Google search for top 10 passwords yeah. of 2021, guess what number one with a bullet is? It is, is it password? No, it that's number three or four. The okay. word password what? is number three or four on the top ten used passwords in 2021. <laughs> All right, so that should already scare you. The number one with a bullet is one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> nice. Number two is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number three is QWERTY, and number four is password. So th the point you're trying to make, or the point you're making, sorry, is even though we we know it's a bad password. People still use those. Right. And put yourself in an attacker's, right? So a lot of times you got to kind of play the role. Put yourself in an attacker's position. Okay, let's say they're cracking Wi-Fi passwords or they've gotten a hash dump somewhere and they're cracking passwords. Do, do they feel like less of a hacker because they found a bunch of easy passwords in a hash dump? No, they are happy as a clam because now they have passwords and that's exactly what they wanted. They, they don't care how hard your password is. Actually, they probably would, would hope you were using an easy password. And guess what? A lot of people do. A lot of people use bad passwords, which is why we tell people, okay, we, for whatever reason, we can't solve the bad password riddle. Uh, so how about this? Let's, let's go ahead and enable 2FA or MFA of some kind yeah. so that we can, you can have your, your weak password and still have some sort of security around it. So the fact that I'm cracking passwords that are quote unquote weak um, is not my fault. I, I don't use bad passwords. <laughs> I, like I, I use I really like good it's passwords. Not, it's not your fault that I use a bad password. Come yeah. on, it's your fault. Yeah, right? That, that's not my <laughs> fault. In the real world, people use weak passwords. That's just the name of the game. Human and nature. Yeah. Yes, it's just human nature. It's too hard to type this in. It's too weird. I can't remember it. I've got too many. And these are, these are legit complaints against having to use a password, which is why password managers are a godsend because they help us with that. I don't have to remember anything. It does it for me. I only need to remember one. I only need to make one good password. And that's the only one I got to remember when it comes to using something like a password manager. So this is an encouraged thing. And then when it which comes Which is your to, favorite? Sorry. My favorites? Eh. That's a hard one. I use LastPass. They've had their yeah. issues. They've... They've had breaches yeah. and things of that nature, but you know, whatever, it's fine. There are other things out on the market. I'm sure that they are constantly, it doesn't matter how big you are. Apple's been hacked. Facebook's been hacked. Everyone's been hacked. Everyone's going to get hacked. It's all about just like giving me some security. So yeah, do I default to LastPass? Yeah. Well, my company uses LastPass. That's not my call. I don't make that call. So my company uses it. Therefore I use it. Uh, but and it but tell me, you know, we talked about like Facebook getting hacked. Yeah. Can you explain, um, sorry to interrupt, the Rock U file? Because that's kind of uh, pertinent, if you like, or relevant to yeah. this discussion of so, Facebook getting hacked. Really interesting story behind that. If you want to know like the details, there is a Darknet Diaries episode I highly recommend you checking out. Uh, and he kind of goes into detail on, on that. But the gist of the story was it was his website, Rock U, and they got breached and they had a massive amount of users. And from that breach, there were a ton of passwords recovered and it was put into a dump called the rockyou.txt file. And the, the interesting thing about this or that came out of that was the fact that there were so many um, passwords that were cracked, it let us kind of get a glimpse into the common man and the common woman's idea of what they thought a good password was. I kind of played around with it the other day 
And I was like, I wonder what the longest password is in the Rock U file. Because, you know, it, you got to understand the difference between a dictionary attack versus a brute force attack, right? Yeah, could you explain that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is uh, so relevant to the conversation. So a brute force, technically they're both brute force attacks, either a dictionary attack or a per se brute force attack. Okay, so a brute force attack, we'll start there because then we can kind of work our way down to what a dictionary is. So a brute force attack says, okay, I'm going to, you tell me some parameters, A, what characters to use, how long to go. So, you know, is it eight, 10, two, or a range between zero and 20 or whatever, or just infinity if that's what you like. And I'm going to just start with the very first character in that character set and try it. So let's say that first character is A. So I tried A, didn't work, not the password. Okay, let's try A, A. All right, A, A is not the password. Yeah, next one. And so on and so on and so forth, right? Then until it works its way through the entire, every single combination of the entire character sets that you have fed it and the parameters. So it's, it's, it's doing just that. It's just trying everything until something sticks. All right, so compare that with a dictionary file, which does the same thing in a way. What I mean is, is it tries things that you have told it to try, which is a list of words. So instead of just every possible set, I'm going to feed you a file with possibly good passwords. Try each one. If they don't work, move to the next one and so on and so forth. So it is also a type of brute force, attack, brute force attack. We just don't call it that. We just call it because we want to differentiate it between a true brute force versus using a dictionary file to brute force it. So with brute force, a true brute force is going to take you a lot longer, well, it can, uh, than it would be with a dictionary file because all your machine has to do with a dictionary file is just run through each one of those things, giving it a try. And all it's doing is taking the word in the dictionary file, hashing it with the hash value or the hash algorithm of which you're trying to crack. And once it has that hash, it compares that with the hashed password and sees if they're the same. It just does a comparison. If it's not, it moves on to the next thing. So there is some overhead behind that. But with a, um, a brute force, it can take much longer. And this is where the idea of if you make your password long, use multiple character sets. So the longer and the more characters that you use, the more difficult it's going to be for a brute force type of attack to be successful. Now, go back to your dictionary attack. It doesn't matter how long or complex your password is. If it is in the dictionary, you are hosed. You are getting hacked. You are getting, your password will be cracked. Yeah. So you, you've got to kind of, when you create good passwords, you got to keep both of those ideas in mind that, okay, I want it to be of sufficient length and complexity to defeat a true brute force, but I also want to make it weird enough that it's probably not in a dictionary file somewhere, right? And that, was, that is what will keep you out of this. Most people do not think that way, and therefore, we can use you know, dictionary files like RockU and still be successful with it, as, as we have here. Now, this could have been you know, any other thing as well, but um, or, or I could have made a couple of other passwords and we could have tried that. Did but, you did you work out the maximum length? I think I'm not sure if you said it. So I length. got to 195 characters and was like, I'm tired oh, wow. of doing this. I'm tired of looking, you know. So I was just like grepping, uh, you know, uh, and doing it for for length and trying to grep out the length. It was basically like, hey, search for a string of characters this long, and um, and return it if you find anything that's that long specifically. So that, uh, that that's that's your point about like the. Um even if you use a long password, yeah. if it's part of a breach, like let's say you use that password on Facebook, yeah. that, that, um, that's, po that's now a, a, a breached password that hackers have access to in word lists. Absolutely. So that password could be cracked because it's gonna be in a dictionary, in a dictionary somewhere or word list somewhere. You, you nailed it. And not only that, but you can also mutate the word list so that it is now not just running through the word list, then it will go back through it, giving it parameters. So kind of like taking brute force and dictionary and putting them together and saying, okay, well, um, try these as well. Uh, try, if you got the word password, say your, your dictionary says password. Cool. 
Well, I also want you to try uppercase P for password and try a number on the end of it. Well, I can tell John, I can give it some rules and John will try password and then it will capitalize the first, uh, the, the first character of that word and add the, the number one at the end. So it can also do like that hybrid as well. So you add a couple of rules to it. Now, if you have a really robust password file, you put some rules in. I actually looked up uh, 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 some rules for us here. Let me jump over here to this website. This is gracefulsecurity.com. Uh, Custom rules for John the Ripper examples. And uh, this pen tester uh, or security specialist named Holly, Holly Graceful, I guess her name is, she posted the rules that she has been using to um, help defeat Windows complexity requirements, right? So you got to have an wow. uppercase, you got to have this. And these are easy, right? So this C-A-Z thing, all that means is uh, C stands capitalize the first letter. A-Z means append something to the end. And then I'll give you what that is, which is this set of characters. So she gives it a range of zero through nine. So now whatever's in my dictionary file, it'll run through that. And then it will try to capitalize the first letter and add a one or zero. Actually, it'll start with zero and then try capitalize with a one and capitalize with a two, capitalize with a three and through that range zero through nine. And as you can see, you can continue, you can add special characters in there. You can make it two numbers and make that go through each iteration of those two numbers. So you see you're adding, you're bolting on that brute force to your dictionary. You can make it much more robust. So and that's because humans often make a password where the first letter is uppercase. That's it. And then they, they bolt on digits or special characters at the end, yeah? Right, Human because, nature. Right, because well, you know, the, the website or whatever, the, the authentication mechanism when you're creating your password, it complains to you, right? It says, hey, that's not strong enough. You need to add, you need to have these character sets. Must have yeah. one uppercase, must have at least one lowercase, must have a special character. Here's the range of special characters. It must include one number. You go, oh, okay, well, I'll just take that password, capitalize the first letter, <laughs> add a zero, zero, 001 on the end of it and an exclamation point, and bam, I, I've met all the requirements. Now all I gotta do is just add some of these mutations to my password list and I'm gonna be more successful because of it. People are still using the same passwords. They're just changing them to meet those new, more complexity, uh, more robust complexity requirements. We just gotta, we just gotta shuffle a little bit to make it past that. I mean, do you have a place where you get uh, like passwords from? Like, I mean, the RockU comes as part of Kali or Kali Linux. Um, are there any other places where you would get passwords? So Kali actually has quite a few word lists in it. Um, it's yep. not just RockU. And uh, let's go back over there. And I'll show you where that is. If we go into cd slash user slash share, there is the word lists uh, directory. If you do an LS, I've got a few in here that I've created myself. So I was noticing that some word lists would have things that other word lists didn't. So I started mangling them together and making one large giant word list. And that's why you see these Durmasters right here. But fast track is a good one. Um, it's short. But if you're looking for a quick win, it might be in fast track. If you're looking to not sit here and wait for forever for this thing to actually crack, then um, that might be a good way to go, right? So uh, fast track is a really quick and dirty one if you want to use it in other areas as well. There's also, it looks like Metasploit. If you go into CD Metasploit, Metasploit, Metasploit. They've got some password lists here, quite a few of them. You see things like, Unix passwords, right? <laughs> that might be helpful. Hey, is anybody running Tomcat? There's default passwords for Tomcat. So if you want to get really specific, some great passwords up in here in, um, in Metasploit. Let's back it up though. There's also uh, sec lists. And in here, they're kind of like broken down by type. So if you're trying to do fuzzing or discovery, there's these dictionary lists for doing all those types of things. But one of them here is called passwords, right? So CD into passwords and do an LS. And you can see we got quite a few in here. We even have a, dire a directory for common credentials. We've got a directory for cracked hashes. We've got uh, some top 10 or top lists. So top 10, top 100, top 1000, top 10,000 kind of thing from this dark web 2017 dump. Uh, we've got default creds. We love default creds, right? Again, going back, oh, those are easy passwords. People don't change passwords. They are not good at security. So that's why we need to be testing against that. If we're engaged 
in a security audit, we're testing for vulnerabilities, we want to check passwords to see and make sure that people are actually using quality, strong, strong passwords that will resist those different types of attacks, as well as maybe even having some multi-factor authentication using more than one thing so that if their password is weak, they still got to get past another step. It's not impossible, but it does make it more difficult, right? And increases their chances of getting caught. This is all about that layered defense and layered security. So tons of passwords right here inside of Kali. You got to you got to show us the stupid ones in production file. The stupid ones. Let's see here. Yeah, let's go in the default creds here. Let's go let's see here. Default creds. Yeah, right, right where you are. There's a file called stupid ones in. Production. Oh, is there? Oh yeah, I see it. Let's see here. Sorry. Let's go back. Uh, I'll just uh, less that less stupid ones in production, and let's see here. So there's four. <laughs> P U God Sex and Secret. So that's that's from the movie Hacker Hackers. Um, at least I remember God, Sex, and Secret being um, in Hackers. But people put that in production. People are going to use this, right? This is a production thing, right? So funny kind of thing here. Let me um, let me quit out shows, of here. Sorry, Daniel. Shows the other one you were going to show. Yeah, I was going to go in default creds just to look and see what's in default creds. Um, let's see here, default creds, and which one you got? You got one. We got a MySQL one. We got Oracle databases. Uh, let's do Tomcat. Be yep. Tomcat better default pass. So let's cat Tomcat better default passes. So here is not only the passwords, but the account that it goes to. And these are default credentials for various and sundry things that have to do with Tomcat, right? So yeah, admin, admin, right? Uh, add secret, add Tomcat. These don't look too, do oh, look at their password because they're defaults. They're meant to be changed, but people don't do that. Therefore, leaving themselves exposed to someone if they were running some sort of um, cracking mechanism. Obviously, this is against logins, but I can snatch all these passwords out of there and use it as a dictionary file and say, hey, give that a shot. Maybe somebody reused these passwords, right? That's why we have the idea of credential stuffing and, and password reuse, right? We don't want to be reusing passwords. Yeah, and the problem is, you know, we say all this, but people still do what they're not supposed to do. And that's why it's, you know, hackers can break into these systems. I mean, Facebook, like you mentioned, got hacked recently. Yeah. There's been these huge hacks. Um, and um, people are still using, I mean, your example of the top 10 passwords for 2021, people are still using the same old passwords. Yeah, and if you want to check your password just to kind of see whether or not it actually is strong, well, hey, you can look for it in one of these files. Like one of the things I'll do is um, if I think, did I make Come a, on, use, use one of your real passwords, Daniel. Yeah, that's happening. <laughs> that's happening. I'll use a password that I use for like when I'm teaching that, you know, we'll, we'll check it there because it I meets mean, complexity. Your, your banking password, come on. Yeah, that, that's not happening, my man. That's not happening. Get real. Come on. Come on, man. Let's see here. Let's go back. Where are we at here? Let's go to Rock You. So what I'll do is I'll CD into, oh, I guess I got to go back even one more. It's in word lists. So I'll just grep for the password. So if I think, you know, is is password 001 in the Rock U list? So I can just grep out, so Rock U. And look, hey, password 001 with a capital P is not in the Rock U list. So, so that's a password you're gonna use now. That's a password you can use. And if someone's using Rock U, they won't hack it. Well, at least the, my version of it. Uh, maybe if you've modified it or something like that. Now. If I wanted to just see, what about just the word password, right? Or let's let's take the let's take the top ten. Let's see if it's in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't, oh yeah, so that's in there. Not only that, but this is all the variations thereof. I can I can kind of make some changes to this to try to let's see here. Make it a little start with that. What is it? Dollar sign and yeah. with this. And yes, it is in there, right? So if I'm using Rock U and your password, which is the number one password of 2020, is in Rock U, and it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack your password, right? That's just it. Again, I don't use I don't use bad passwords. <laughs> I make good passwords, and I check them <laughs> against like Rock U. You can also go to like um, let's open another tab here. You can go to uh, Have I Been Pwned? dot com. I'm just doing a, a search for it. Go to Have I Been Pwned, I'll increase this, and you can check if your email or your phone has been involved in a data breach. So you put your email address in there, put your phone number in there, 
and it has, as you can see, it has 11 billion owned accounts that it can check and see if it was part of any kind of data breach or dump. And uh, you can also go to passwords and check pwned passwords and see if a password has been in there. So you can type your password in. So if our password, I'm going to use that, the one that wasn't in Rock U, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-001. And check, has it been pwned? And oh no, this has been seen 695 times before. <laughs> as I'm sure it has, right? And it'll say, hey, you probably want to take these steps. Step one, protect yourself to generate and have a strong password. They have a service that does that. Enable to factor and subscribe to notifications of other breaches. So they offer this as a service. But it's a great website just to check, is my password secure? If it's not, you're going to get this oh no business. If you see this, you need to change your password and you need to enable 2FA. If you don't have 2FA capabilities, I don't know what to tell you. You know, try another vendor <laughs> that does do that. Or complain to the vendor you're using and say, we really need to make this a part of our security if you, if you want to keep my business. And honestly, you're just begging for a breach at this point. So uh, have I been pwned is always a great way to check to see if a password is weak or strong. Would you, can I ask you some questions, Daniel? Yeah, go ahead. Would you, what's your favorite? Is it Hashcat or John the Ripper? I, I just, I tend to use John the Ripper A because when I started learning this stuff, um, John the Ripper was, was kind of the standard. And this was back, yeah. in, back in the late 90s when I just started. I was, I was a noob script kitty, didn't know much about much. And somebody told me how to crack passwords. It was John the Ripper that did it, right? There are other great things. Hashcat is a phenomenal, it's, it's objectionably, or objectively, I'm not objectionably, but objectively faster and better at cracking passwords. It's a little clunky and I, I'm not really great with the syntax and stuff of it. I could spend more time yeah, with it's it quite and get hard. better at it. It's quite hard. Yeah, it's got some, the way you got to check, check the mode and a couple other things you got to work with. I'm bad at that. I, I, so I tend to default to John the Ripper. And for the most part, it does a great job. So I have it, it, it allows you to use GPU, does it? It does allow you to use GPU it, differently than the way that Hashcat does, but it still does allow you to do that. I think you have to choose one method over the other, whereas Hashcat will do both at the same time. I think if I'm remembering correctly, that's the thing. But that, they're not the only game in town either. There's also like Loft Crack, which if you pay for it, it's a phenomenal cracking thing. Um, there's Oaf Crack, O P H C R A C K, o Off Crack, Oaf Crack. I don't know okay. how you pronounce it, but yeah, don't ask me. Yeah, GUI driven. I, I might even have it in um, my Kali machine here. Let me look that up real quick. Let's see here. O P H. Yeah, Oaf Crack. Uh, bam. So it's GUI driven, works with rainbow tables. So you download tables, pre calculated password hashes. So instead of having to do that function of, Hey, here's the password, hash it with the right algorithm, then compare. That's actually for, I mean, it seems fast, but for the computer, it's actually really slow. You want to speed that up exponentially. You use something like a rainbow table, which just has those pre-calculated hash values and just checks it. And if it finds it, Hey, there's your password. It works against windows. I think it used does Linux. It does a couple other things as well, but you can, you can grab some, um, uh, rainbow tables from their website and that's all built into the machine itself. So you can just check that out, but th that's another one, but I just tend to run to John for most things. I work in the terminal almost invariably and it's just an easy, Hey, John, blah, blah, blah. Here, here's a file, go to work and I'm done. So I tend to use this. Do you want to show some of the options in John? Yeah, uh, sure. Daniel, some of your favorite options and things. Let's see here. Uh, let's do John. Was it dash dash help? Uh, yeah, there we go. We've got a few options here. Let's see here. So obviously word list is a big one, right? We're going to throw that quite often. Um, dupe suppression, that can be nice. If you put the same user and uh, password hash in the file that it's looking at, it'll go, oh, we've got multiple versions and, and throw that out. It'll only do one of them. Uh, let's see here. Rules is a good one. This is how you enable your rules. So uh, if you want to mess around with uh, creating those custom rules, like we saw with with graceful security, maybe yeah. copy and paste that into the right area. You give it a nice label and then you invoke those rules using the dash dash rules equals and then you give it the rules name, right? So really good for that. 
Let's see here. What is it? Another anything else that I typically use? What about the like hash types, or do you just let John discover that? Sometimes you run into that. I typically just see if John can do it because why fiddle around yeah. with it? Let it discover it knows. itself. Yeah. But yeah, you do have here. It is format right there, and then you just say force hash type, and then you give it the hash type. If you want to know what those formats are, you've got list formats. So if you do John dash dash list list equals formats. Here are all the different hashing algorithms that it can crack against, which is quite extensive. Right? It's, it's not bad. It's a pretty good list. But like I said before, so like here's my SQL and here's my SQL 05 or, or MS SQL, I guess it is. MS SQL 1-2. Sometimes that stuff comes into play. And if you know what the format is, you just do dash. You look it up, make sure that it supports it, then do dash dash format equals MS SQL 1-2. And now it's going to stick to just that. And hopefully that's what gets you where you're trying to go because that's the right type of hash. Um, if not, then you're, it, you're moving on. But it was great that it just picks it up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does a good job. Makes it easy. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've had some, the most time, mostly when I have to do this is when I'm working with like Windows passwords. It'll go, oh, we've detected this is NTLM, but maybe it's NTLMv2, maybe, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so you kind of have to get a little granular there once in a while and tell it, this is this is the hash I want you to try to use. Any more options you want to talk about? You know, for, for the most part, that's that's about what I do with it. Um, for what I do and and how I work, that's, that's usually all I need. Maybe um, turning on the GPU functionality with it would um, give you a little more speed if you have a GPU available. Uh, I don't know if it's in... The help file. I'm sure it's in the man file. So man, John, and just look for, do a search for GPU. That's what, is it case sensitive maybe? That's not going to tell me. I would say that it's in here somewhere, but there's an option. I can't remember it off the top of my head of exactly, but it's John something and it invokes the, the GPU versioning of it. And just look through, I, I, I always tell you, you need to read the, the user manuals for these things because there's a lot of really cool details in there that might be specific. So at least give it a skim, kind of just look your way through it and go, oh, that looks interesting, that looks interesting. You don't have to read it word for word, but kind of look for those highlights and that's gonna make you much more efficient and effective at using the tool when you run into those edge cases where you have to make some sort of weird modification to get where you're going. But for the most part, John's pretty straightforward. John, word list, file that I want to crack against and bam, I'm done. Daniel, thanks so much for sharing your knowledge. Where can people learn more and say from you especially, like because you're sharing your knowledge here in like small portions of, of videos, but is there is there a course that you've created? Where can they learn more? Yeah. If you want to see more of this ugly mug, then you just check, check <laughs> us out over at itpro.tv. We've got all sorts of security courses starting from Security Plus. So if you're new to security and you're like, where do I begin? Security Plus is usually a really good place to land. Um, Wes and I go through that and it's very in-depth. It's very uh, comprehensive. So we're going to give you a little bit of just about everything. And then you can move up into different security certifications, whether you be into blue team or red team. I've got uh, some blue team stuff. So CISA plus I've got uh, CyberSec first responder in there as well. We do things like um, forensics investigation. I think we work with Adam on that. Such good stuff in there. Great courses, CISSP. And if you're on the red team side of things, you'll see a whole lot more of me because that's what I do. I uh, have a penetration testing course. We've got CEH, we've got Pentest Plus, and I also have a hands-on hacking course where we take all those skills that you would learn in something like that and we apply it, learn to build a methodology that's effective for doing something like a penetration test or working away through a CTF. Great supplemental type of information for those of you going through uh, eLearn Securities EJPT or ECPPT or Offensive Securities OSCP, that type of thing. Daniel, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, David. You know, I enjoy it. And anytime you want me, just got to holler. <laughs>